The next episode in our series is titled Canada's Official UFO Studies. We will explore two of Canada's UFO reporting agencies, Project Magnet and Second Story, both established in the early 1950s. Also, we will examine some details of the infamous Shag Harbor UFO incident. This case is one of the very few where a government agency formally acknowledges an unidentified flying object. It was determined that no known aircraft was involved in the incident, so the source remains unknown to this day. Now, Project Magnet was established in December 1950. The intent of the project was to collect data and apply it to practical engineering and technology. The main focus was in understanding the physics of geomagnetism and the possibility of using the Earth's magnetic field as a source of propulsion. The Canadian Department of Transportation senior engineer, William B. Smith, directed the program. The creation of the project is credited to a memo that Smith sent to the Department of Transportation in November of 1950. Smith felt he had discovered how UFOs operated and the investigation of UFOs could lead to incredible advancements in technology. According to Smith, the existence of a different technology is borne out by the investigations which are being carried on at the present time in relation to flying saucers. Smith also advised the Department of Transportation that having made a number of discreet inquiries at the Canadian Embassy in Washington, D.C., he had learned the following, that A, the matter is the most highly classified subject in the United States government, rating higher even than the H-bomb, B, flying saucers exist, C, their modus operandi is unknown, but concentrated effort is being made by a small group headed by Dr. Vannevar Bush. And D, the entire matter is considered by the United States authorities to be of tremendous significance. Smith issued reports in 1952 and 1953 as he became more certain of his theory that UFOs manipulated magnetism for flight. He also concluded that mankind has failed to grasp this concept due to the lack of attention to the structure of the Earth's magnetic fields in our study of physics. Project Magnet went defunct in 1954. Smith continued his extraterrestrial studies until his death in 1962. With his last 10 years of study, Smith released a book titled The New Science. He also wrote a number of articles for Topside a publication of the Ottawa New Sciences Club. A collection of those articles was published in 1969 under the title, The Boys from Topside. Now, Project Second Story was a parallel UFO study program established by the Canadian government in April 1952. The Defense Research Board sponsored the project. The members of the committee, which included William B. Smith, came together from other government agencies. The committee was solely dedicated to dealing with flying saucer reports. The main purpose was to compile a catalog of sightings with correlating data from the sighting reports. In an attempt to minimize the personal equation and create a measure of truthfulness in each report, interrogators used an instructional guide along with a questionnaire developed for the agency. The questionnaire consisted of 28 questions it included details on the observer asking if they had previous relevant experience, had seen objects before, or wore glasses. It also requested details on the observation, position, number of objects, length of time observed, shape, size, color, and it even inquired about weather conditions. Each questionnaire ended with the interrogator's opinion of the reliability of the observer. According to information made public by the Canadian government, the work of Project Second Story ceased in 1953. The meeting minutes are available to the public, but only for the first few meetings. The short-lived lifespan of the project suggests the possibility that the committee was simply not interested or not equipped to create a method conducive of scientific conclusion. The details contained in these declassified reports may be helpful to independent researchers today, inspiring individuals to make contributions to help build an improved scientific method to collect data on sightings. Completed questionnaires can be found by searching the Library and Archives of Canada's website. 
Unfortunately, these programs were shut down long before one of the most talked about sightings in Nova Scotia, Canada. Shag Harbor is located in the Gulf of Maine on the southern tip of Nova Scotia. On the night of October 4, 1967, at about 11.20 p.m., or Royal Canadian Mounted Police Corporal and six other witnesses observed the impact of an unknown object into the water. Assuming an aircraft had crashed, officers of the RCMP quickly assembled a rescue mission. Within about 15 minutes, officers arrived on the scene and with the help of local fishermen, within half an hour they had boats out. The fishermen remember traveling through thick, glittery yellow foam to get to where they remember the object entering the water. In the days following the sighting, the Department of National Defense and Royal Canadian Navy divers conducted a three-day underwater search, combing the sea floor, but no trace of any object was found. The only documentation of the incident that exists today is a Department of National Defense memo that reads, quote, the object was described as approximately 60 feet in length and was flying in an easterly direction when first sighted. During their observation, the UFO descended rapidly to the surface and made a bright splash as it struck in the water. For some time after the impact, a single white light remained on the surface." Unquote. At that time, the University of Colorado's UFO Research Project, known as the Condon Committee, was in operation. Their report summary, Case 34, North Atlantic, Fall 1967, consisted of just a few phone calls to sources in the area. The concluding remarks were, quote, no further investigation by the project was considered justifiable, particularly in view of the immediate and thorough search that had been carried out by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and the Maritime Command, unquote. But after noting that no aircraft had been reported missing, no alternate explanation was offered. The case is considered unsolved in the Condon Report. Lingering questions inspired UFO researchers to launch an investigation which was documented on the History Channel's UFO Files, Canada's Roswell, that aired in August 2006. The documentary suggests the government has additional information related to the incident and the researchers also uncovered documents that convinced them that the case should have never been closed. For your need to know, I'm Alejandro Rojas.